Hello again everybody. Last time I told you about my juggling collection. I said if I put my juggling balls into piles of two, I'm going to have one left over. If I put them into piles of three, I'm going to have two left over. If I put my collection into piles of five, I'm going to have four left over. If I put my collection into piles of seven, I have six left over. And if I put my collection into piles of eleven, I'm going to have 10 left over. And the question was, how many juggling balls do I have? Now, did you work it out? Is there only one solution? Well, I can tell you that I have 2,309. Yes, I have a lot of balls. To work this out, you can use something called the Chinese Remainder Theorem. This was first published by 3rd century Chinese mathematicians. Let x be the size of my collection. We know that if I divide my collection into piles of five, I'm going to have four left over. We'll use something called modular arithmetic. I'm going to write it as x equals, with that super equal sign with three lines, x equals four mod five. This means that if I put my collection x into piles of five, I'm going to have four left over. So x could be nine, it could be 14, it could be 19, it could be 24, that would work. It could be 4 as well. And if we include negative numbers, it could be minus 1, minus 11, minus 16, and so on, all the way down. But we also know that if I put my collection into piles of 3, we're going to have 2 left over. So, it could be 2... It could be 5, it could be 8, it could be 11, it could be 14, and so on. The Chinese remainder theorem tells us which numbers fit both equations. Let us solve this first. This only works if the two piles are co-prime. This means I can add and subtract copies of 3 and 5 to make the number 1. So something like this. Uh, you see here I've got 2 times 3, that's 6, take away 1 times 5, OK? And that gives us the number 1. So they are co-prime. Then the Chinese remainder theorem says x is equal to something mod 15. This 15 comes from the 3 times 5. Then the solution to find the question mark uses the remainders in this way. We have a little equation here which uses the two remainders. It multiplies, it adds, and we get the answer 14. So in other words, I can say that x is 14 mod 15. That means that if I put it in piles of 15, I'm going to have 14 left over. So that could be, well, it could be 14, it could be 29, it could be 44, and so on, all the way up. Now, there is another way to do this without using that formula. I could just spot that 14 was a common solution to both equations. Then I can use that and simply say x equals 14 mod 15. So I could just do it by inspection. If I add in the other equations, like this, there we go, we've got five of them, the Chinese remainder theorem tells me that x, my, the size of my collection, is going to be something mod 2310. That 2310 comes from 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11. To work out this question mark is a lot harder now, but we can do it, and we can do it by simply spotting a common solution. And if you notice, minus 1 is a common solution to these equations. So I can say that x is equal to minus 1 mod 2310. So it could be, well it could be minus 1, it could be 2309, it could be 4,619, and so on, all the way up to infinity. But the smallest positive answer was 2,309. And that's how you do it. And if you have been, thanks for watching.